In this video, we are going to learn how to bind a port and host together with a socket. Now you must be thinking, why do we actually need to bind the port and the host together with a socket? Isn't socket enough to connect computers? The answer is not really. I might be able to open up a line of communication with sockets, but it really needs to know the information about the computer or the device it is supposed to be communicating with. And that is what we are going to be doing in this video. So the first thing we are going to do is just write a basic comment that says we are going to be binding uh, the port and the host together. So we just write binding the socket and listening for connections. The second thing we are going to be doing in this video is actually listening for connections. So there is this server.py file that is going to be sitting on a server and it's going to be listening for connections from its victims or maybe your friend or any other kind of client. So before accepting connections, we actually have to listen for connections. And that is what we are going to be doing in this video along with binding the socket. So let's get started with binding the socket and at the end, we listen for connections. So the next thing we are going to do is actually create a function that is going to bind the host and the port together with a socket. We'll just create a function, call it bind underscore socket, put brackets, put a cool, and then we are going to just copy and paste this over here. And we are doing this because we want to access the values of these global variables. In Python, whenever you want to access the variables that are global of another function, you have to declare them again globally using this global keyword variable. Now we have the values of port in our bind socket function, not bind, in bind socket function. So just to test out whether our bind socket function is working properly or not, and whether the values of port are getting to this function or not, we are going to print binding the port and then the port number, which is actually just port. And because this port is an integer, we are going to write string so that it gets converted to a string and we'll just cut and paste the port inside it. So whenever this bind socket function is called, it's definitely going to print the binding the port and then the port number. So till now we have not actually binded the socket with host and port and now we are going to change that. So we'll just write s dot bind and this is known as a tuple. So inside these brackets, I'm going to write another bracket and then inside this bracket, I'm going to write host comma port and this is going to bind the host and the port with a socket and this host comma port format is known as a tuple in Python. So anyways, now that we have binded it, sometimes there might pop an error and it might not actually be able to ho bind the host and port with a socket. So in that case, we are going to use the exception tactic. We're just going to write except and then socket dot error, same as above. We are just going to write as message, not massage, just message. And then we are going to print out the same thing, uh, socket binding error and we are just going to print the message by converting it to a string first but what we also want to do is that whenever there is an error of connecting and socket binding we want it to try again and again so what we are going to do is we are just going to change the lines and then we are going to print retrying and after that we are going to use a technique called recursion recursion basically means calling a function inside a function so whenever there is an error, what we want this function to do is try again. So how can we do that? Through this technique called recursion. Inside this except, we are going to call this bind socket function again. So on the next line, we can just call the bind socket. Now, whenever there is an error in binding the socket, it's going to go to this except section and it's going to call the bind socket function again, which is going to try the whole process again of binding the port and host together with the socket. Now that we are done with the binding section, let's focus on how to listen for connections from our client. That is very easy. We just write s dot listen and then inside brackets, we put a number such as five. So why is listening important? So imagine a situation like this. There is a server and then there is a client which can be your friend or a victim. And he's saying that I want to connect to the server. So to for this connection to happen, the server should be continuously listening for connections from various computers. 
and that is what this s.listen function does. And what is this 5 number inside this function of s.listen? It is basically the number of bad connections it is going to tolerate and after which it's going to throw an error. And during that error, it's going to come to this area and it's going to call the bind socket function again and it's going to retry to connect to that computer. So first we bind the port and host and then we listen for connections. The next portion is about accepting the connections because listening to the connections is just not enough. If there is a client or a victim trying to connect to us, we have to first listen to those connections and when the connection is initiated, we actually have to accept the connection from our side that is from the hacker side or the server side. So in the next video, we are going to be learning how to accept connections.